it helped 14 people plus the driver. And it was a fight every time as to who was going to get to go because we had more senior citizens than that. Sometimes there were some hard feelings. And one morning in particular, two brothers was arguing about it. And I just said, well, we won't go at all. And so they finally made peace with each other and we went. But uh, it, it was some hard feeling about who got to go and who didn't. The longest trip we took was to Stone Mountain, Georgia. And uh, we went down there and spent the day and came back, had a good trip down there. One of the most interesting trips, we went to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and visited a cigarette factory. And, of course, to watch them make those cigarettes was interesting. And when we started out, they said to us, each one of you can get a pack of cigarettes. Well, only one person on the van smoked, and so he told us what kind of cigarettes to pick up. So we got him 15 packs of cigarettes. He was happy about that. I don't remember the brand cigarette, but we got him 15 packs. And on that same trip, we went to a beer place where they made beer up at Winston-Salem. And they showed us the process. We went through the whole thing and when we got ready to leave they said we'll give you a complimentary drink and everybody got one but I was a designated driver so I didn't get to be one but I didn't want it in there but they gave everybody beer to drink and those senior citizens didn't turn it down we went to grandfather's mountain and if you've ever been to grandfather's mountain there's a swinging bridge up there, and you walk across it. I think it's about a mile high, that bridge. Well, we had this little old lady that was 80-something years old at that time. She went walking out across there, and she looked around. She said, where you at, preacher? I said, I'm standing on this side of the bridge. She said, you chicken, you? said, Come on out here on this bridge. Well, I took about 10 steps and I stopped, but she went all the way across and come back. But I didn't go out there. I, I wasn't going across it. But she called me a chicken after that from now on to, because I wouldn't cross the bridge. Oh, yeah, we had a good time. Had a good time. We went to Rock Hill and went through the gardens over there, Glen Aiken Gardens, I think it is in Rock Hill. They love to go over that way. I took them down to Indian Land High School where I finished high school and showed them. We went to Camden one time to that military park at Camden. Wherever somebody would think of. We, most of the time when we left, we didn't know where we were going. And they'd say, just drive. And we'd get up in the mountains or down in the lower part of the state somewhere or another, and they'd say, where are we preaching? I said, I don't know. And we just keep driving till I came to a road that I was familiar with, and we'd come back. Ursel Bridgman always rode shotgun right beside me, and he would always say, we're not lost, we just don't know where we are. And that was our theme. And we didn't care where we were as long as we got back before dark. And we it was one of the most enjoyable experiences I had. We went to PTL uh, when it was in progress in Charlotte uh, and went through it. It was very interesting. I had been there before, but most of them had a very beautiful place, beautiful place. We drove over 10,000 miles in while I was there. Uh, probably the last three years I was there is when we started that. Over 10,000 miles, didn't even have as much as a flat tire, thank goodness. And the one thing that worried me about it afterwards was what I would I have done if one of them had got sick or had a heart attack or whatever. Because I was the youngest one in the bunch and at that time, I was close to 60 years old, I guess. We run out of over a tank of gas a lot of times. We went up on Mount Mitchell one time 
we wasn't supposed to be up there. Uh, it had snowed, and they had the road blocked, and we turned around and came back down, and we had to get some gas down there at the place. And I was telling the man, I said, uh, we trying to get up on Mount Mitchell, but they got the road blocked. I said, some of these people never have been up there. It was snow everywhere. He said, well, if you really want to go, you can go right up here, and there's a little back road you take up through that said it's a one-lane road, and it'll take you up there. I said, just out through the wilderness now, I'm telling you. So I got back on the van, and I told them what they They said, let's go, let's go. We went up, and it was out in the boondock, sure enough. It took us probably 40 minutes. We didn't see a thing but trees and water and snow. We got up on top of Mount Mitchell. It was so foggy, you could not see in front of your face, and down to about 28 degrees, ice everywhere. And lo and behold, there was a park ranger up there. He come over to me and he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I was bringing these people up here to see this. I said, they never had been up here. And I said, you had the roadblock. And we went down to his service station and he told us how we could come up through here. He looked at me and he said, and you did that? I said, yes, sir, I did. I'm the one responsible for it. And, of course, all of them chimed in and said, well, we told him to do it, officer. He said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you all 10 to 15 minutes. And you all better get back down this mountain. I'm going to start down the mountain, and I better not catch up with you. So it didn't take us long to come back down that mountain. But I think about that so many times. If something would have happened up in there, and maybe the park ranger hadn't have been up there. We didn't have any telephone or anything. And with all them people in freezing weather, it's hard to tell what would have happened. And Miss Calvert had an eye like an eagle when it comes to hunting a place to eat. We would be riding along and somebody say, we need to stop and get something to eat. And we wouldn't go a mile to Miss Calvert say, Way up yonder on the right, I see a hearty sign. None of us could see it, but she could see it. And sure enough, it'd be up there. And that's where we'd stop and eat. Yeah, Miss Nelson always carried food on the van, and I was a diabetic, of course. And she didn't want my sugar to drop. So about every 10 minutes, she'd hand me something to eat. I probably gained 10 pounds on those trips up through there. She told Judy when Judy and I got married, said, I've been with your husband a whole lot more than you have, and I fed him every day. <laughs>